ranking conflicts between NPV and IRR. The point here is that occasionally the NPV rule will give you one result and the IRR rule will tell you to do something else. Whenever there is a conflict, you need to go with the higher NPV project. But let us look at this material in more detail. If you have a particular project with conventional cash flows, and if you recall, conventional cash flow means that there is only one change in sign, then there will be no conflict between NPV and IRR. In other words, if the NPV rule says that go for the project, the IRR rule will always say the same thing. If you have two projects which are independent and they have conventional cash flows, then again, there will be no conflict between the NPV and IRR decision rules. We have a possible issue if we have two projects which are mutually exclusive. And this can happen even with conventional cash flows. It is possible that, there, that we can have a conflict between the NPV and IRR rules. And the conflicts can arise because of two possible reasons. One, there is a difference between the cash flow patterns. And two, there is a difference in the scale. Let's look at these items in more detail. Ranking conflict due to differing cash flow patterns. Consider two projects here, X and Y. For project X, we have a fairly stable cash flow over a four year period. Whereas for project Y, we have the money coming up at the end. So clearly the cash flow pattern is different. What I want you to do is come up with the NPV and IRR for project X and then the NPV and IRR for project Y. For NPV, assume a discount rate of 10%. And then you need to decide which project to select based on each rule. And just to take this to completion, also show the NPV profile for both projects. Here is what you should come up with. Based on the NPV rule, it clearly makes sense to select project Y because project Y has a higher NPV. But based on the IRR rule, it makes sense to select project X because X has a higher IRR. And again, when there is a conflict, the NPV rule is what you go with. Hopefully you recognized that we had done the same example before. When you come up with the NPV profile, you will notice that there is a crossover point. And I will not do that here in detail because this has been covered on an earlier slide. Ranking conflict due to differing project scale. Now we are looking at projects C and D. Notice that project D is four times bigger than project C. And here again, I want you to come up with the NPV and IRR numbers for both projects. And I want you to come up with the NPV profile. Here is what you should come up with. And notice again that there is a conflict between the NPV and IRR decision rules. NPV says go with project D. IRR says go with project C. When there is a conflict, you go with the NPV rule. And here is what the NPV profile looks like for both the projects. Now I want you to do this example. Notice this is the same set of projects that we saw on the previous slide. So here is the NPV profile for project D. Here is the NPV profile for project C. We are effectively being asked about the crossover point because that's the point where both projects have the same IRR. So at what rate do we have a crossover? You can look at the two NPV profiles and it should be fairly obvious 
based on looking at these two profiles that the crossover point is somewhere between 10% and 25%. So the correct answer is B. The multiple IRR problem and no IRR problem. When you have non-conventional cash flows, such as the numbers shown over here, we, where we have more than one change in sign, then it is possible that a project has either multiple IRRs or there is no IRR. What I want you to do now is come up with the NPV profile for both these scenarios. Here is roughly what you should come up with. For the first project, notice that initially the NPV is negative. It will rise and notice also that we have two intercepts on the x-axis. So this project really has two IRRs. This issue is called the multiple IRR problem. With the second project, we do not have a intercept on the x-axis and this is the no IRR problem. We can only have this issue when we have non-conventional cash flows. Now that does not mean that we have these problems for all non-conventional cash flows. It only happens for some non-conventional cash flows. Here now is a quick comparison between IRR and NPV. With NPV, the advantages are as follows. NPV is a direct measure of the expected increase in the value of a firm. And theoretically, this is the best approach. As I have said several times, whenever there is a conflict, you go with what NPV says. The disadvantage is that the NPV does not consider the project size. And I go back to an example which I gave earlier where project A has an investment of 1 million and a NPV of 0 0.1 million. Project B has an investment of 1 billion and the NPV is 0 0.1 million. If A and B are mutually exclusive, then based on the higher NPV, we would pick project B. But just looking at these two numbers does not tell us anything about the, the size of the project. With IRR, we get a sense for the return on each dollar invested. Or in other words, if we know that the IRR on a project is 10%, we know that roughly we are getting a return of 10%. The IRR method allows us to compare the return with the required rate. If the required rate is 5% and the IRR is 10%, then this looks very good. We can say that the project is fairly profitable. On the other hand, if the required rate of return is 9.5% and the IRR is 10%, then we know that this project is only marginally profitable disadvantages and here is a big one from a testability perspective irr incorrectly assumes that the money that is generated during the project is reinvested at the irr rate in other words if we have a project where the required rate is five percent and the irr is ten percent then any cash flows generated according to the IRR calculation, are uh, assumed to be reinvested at 10%. The theoretically correct assumption, however, and one that is used by the NPV method, is that intermediate cash flows are reinvested at the required rate. And it is because of this that we have issues such as conflicts between what NPV says and what IRR says. And that's the next point over here, that an issue with IRR is that at times it might conflict with NPV. The other issue with IRR that we just talked about is that we might have at times multiple IRRs or no IRRs, but this will only happen if we have non-conventional cash flows.
Coming now to corporate usage of capital budgeting methods. The various capital budgeting methods that we've talked about, such as NPV, IRR, the payback method, are all used at corporations. But analysts and corporate managers should understand the logic and the practicalities associated with the different methods that we've talked about. If a corporate manager is engaging in a project and the manager is focused on shareholder value and stock price, then the method that links most closely with the stock price is net present value, and we'll discuss this in more detail on the next slide. If a manager is concerned with the return that might be expected from a given project, then the IRR method makes sense. If the manager is concerned with how long it will take to recoup an initial investment, then the payback method is appropriate. Having said that, a combination of these methods can be used because they give different perspectives. Typically in finance textbooks, the NPR method and IRR are promoted and that's because these make sense from a theoretical perspective. Having said that, the payback method is quite popular in different parts of the world and in smaller private companies where the level of management sophistication is relatively low, in such environments, the payback method is used quite frequently. Relationship between NPV and stock price. NPV is a direct measure of the expected change in a firm's value from undertaking a capital project. NPV is the criteria most related to stock prices. A positive NPV project should cause a proportionate increase in a company's stock value. These concepts are illustrated through an example. Let's say a company is undertaking a project with a expected NPV of 500 million. The company has 100 million shares outstanding and each share has a price of $50. What is the likely impact of the project on the stock price? If the project has an NPV of 500 million, that means that by doing this project, the overall value of the firm will go up by 500 million. Since there are 100 million shares, then on a per share basis, the increase is going to be 500 million divided by 100 million, which is equal to 5. And that means that if the share price is 50 before doing this project, then by doing this project, the value can go up by 5. So from 50, the share price is likely to go up to 55. This is a extremely simplistic example, but the point is to illustrate the fact that Positive NPV projects have a direct impact on share price. That brings us to the end of the reading, a summary of the main points. You need to understand the capital budgeting process. We discussed this briefly at the start where we need to come up with ideas, identify projects, select the profitable projects and then consider the strategy of our company to identify the particular projects that make sense. You need to be on top of NPV calculation and NPV rule, which essentially says that you select positive NPV projects. If you are selecting between projects, i.e. you have mutually exclusive projects, then you select the project with the highest NPV as long as the NPV is positive. You need to know the IRR calculation. And actually, when I say calculation over here, you need to know the concepts behind the calculation, but you need to be able to do the work on a calculator. Make sure you are an expert at using the calculator. The IRR is that return which makes the NPV of a project equal to zero. IRR rule is that you select projects with the highest IRR as long as the IRR is greater than the required return. We talked about several issues with IRR. When you have mutually exclusive projects, then there are times where the IRR and the NPV rule will give you different answers that can happen because of differences in scale or differences in the cash flow patterns. Whenever there is a conflict, you go with what 
the NPV rule says. We also have the issue of multiple IRRs and the issue of no IRRs where they are non-conventional cash flows. As a subtle point, you need to recognize that the conflicts between IRR and NPV arise because IRR incorrectly assumes that any intermediate cash flows are reinvested at the IRR rate. The theoretically correct assumption is that intermediate cash flows are invested or reinvested at the required rate. You need to be comfortable with the NPV profile, recognizing that the y-axis intercept is the undiscounted cash flows or it is based on the undiscounted cash flows and the x-axis intercept is the IRR. Do the summary as always, review the learning objectives, do the examples. The examples in this reading are short and quite helpful. Practice problems are good, make sure you do them very carefully. And as I keep saying, practice questions from other sources as well. That is it.